we have to think of this ongoing payment and we have to think of the new year. What are you putting out in the new year? Because whatever you're putting out in the new year has to be organized now. So what are you organizing now for the new year so that you've got some money coming in, so you've got some income, so that you can put money aside for a holiday or for your retirement or whatever, add money to the mortgage, whatever it might be. So I want you to really think about that. I want you to sit down and think, the new year's coming. How am I planning and what am I doing for the new year? Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, coaches, and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to the needs of you, the practicing natural therapist. We have interviews during the holiday season and business and mindset support each week so you'll get the variety you need to enjoy and stay motivated in your practice. Don't forget to subscribe to receive the weekly episodes. And if you want to connect with me, always check the show notes because that's where you'll find the links to book appointments and of course, to join the Academy, the membership group where there's constant connection and community with like-minded practitioners. Now, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How the devil are you? Well, if you listened last week, then you'd know that I'm working with a cold right now with a bit of an upper respiratory tract infection, very annoyingly. What did we talk about last week? We talked about our basic earnings and being sick and what we're going to do when we're sick. What have you got in place to deal with that? And also, I forgot to say, what about insurance? insurance for your partner if you have one, insurance that's going to cover you when you're off sick. It might not be viable financially, but it might be worth looking at. I honestly believe there is nothing wrong with having more than one job, with being a naturopath or a nutritionist or a herbalist or whatever your modality is and doing something as well. And the reason for that isn't necessarily financial, although it's very nice, isn't it? Somebody else putting something into your into your pension fund and all the rest of it and sick pay and things like that. You might not get it if you're a casual. But what it does is it gives you time away from your business, from working by yourself and alone. All right? I mean, I'm all about connection and communication. It's why I have the Monday. The people in the Monday group, a couple of them have other jobs on the go. There's a couple of pharmacists in there. There's a nurse in there. So there are people who don't want to give up those careers, but at the same time are like, oh, maybe I do want to give up the career. I at least want to drop number of hours and only work maximum two days a week in that job. And that's fine. I mean, I've always loved having another job and seeing clients because it's very intense seeing clients. So when I was away and with my friends that have come over from the UK in the Northern Territory, my girlfriend is a nurse. I met her when I was a neonatal intensive care nurse in Nottingham many, many, many years ago. And she's come out a few times to Australia and I've been to meet her, went to Melbourne once. And so I flew to Melbourne from Adelaide and hung out with her. And But this time she's like, you know, we want to see the top end. We're going to hire a, a ute camper thing. And we want to travel over the top end. It's September, October. It's so hot. I was like, this is like the worst time. There's school holidays and it's going to be boiling. She's like, no, no, it's the only time I can get, you know, I've got to apply for a month's leave and things like that. So when we were sitting around one evening being eaten mercilessly by bugs, I said, you know, what are you doing now? Because she's not neonates anymore like me. She gave it up once she had children. She couldn't do the nights and weekends. And So what are you doing now? And she's working in general practice. Now, general practice in the NHS is very different to general practice in Australia. And and I was like, oh, you know, so what shifts do you work? And she said, well, I work two shifts a week of 11 hours and two half days. And my husband and I, because, you know, we're both medical, went, you're kidding. That's massive. And um, her husband was like, what? It wouldn't seem much to me. And we were like, no, that's huge. I said, 11 hours seeing one client after another, after another. I said, yep. She said, I do all sorts of things. You know, people come in with everything. I'll dress wounds one minute. I'll give vaccination the next. Someone will come in with something and then turn around and say, oh, we have a look at this. 
And then I've got to call in the doctor because we've discovered a cancerous growth or something. She said, you know, it's really interesting. And I was like, yeah, but that's massive seeing that many people. That is so intense. And my husband was just like, I can't believe you're seeing that many people one after another. Because, of course, you know, they will be the 15-minute appointments but interspersed with the old half-hour appointment. And so really full on. And she was like, oh, no. And he, but her husband was like, oh, I don't get it. So part of this conversation today is our partners and the people we're with, do they understand the intensity of what you do? Which is why a side hustle of something else is always a great idea so that you haven't got that intensity of seeing one client after another with the expectations of those clients and possibility of burnout. I mean, admittedly, she's working for somebody else. She's working in a practice. She's in the NHS. So once she finishes, she goes home and she's done for the day. She doesn't carry the clients, well, she will carry clients' baggage with her because she can't help it, but she hasn't got paperwork to do, book work to do. She hasn't then got to do any advertising. Being in the NHS, she's totally oversubscribed already. So it's not like she's putting up Instagram posts or anything else or producing a podcast. You know, these things aren't happening for her. But that's still really intense, seeing that number of people that intensively, two 11-hour shifts with a half-hour break for lunch and a 15-minute break if she's lucky. I mean, it's just ludicrous, isn't it? So I think let's look at ourselves. What pressure are we putting ourselves under to see the number of people we see? Now, I saw a thread in one of the Facebook groups and it was like, oh, I'm thinking of putting up my hourly rate, but I don't really know how and what should I do? And, and everybody, and should I make it prepaid? And everyone was like, yeah, make it prepaid. Who doesn't make it prepaid these days? It just stops people not turning up. People will always turn up because they've paid for it. And there's no cancellations. They will always just defer. But the money, we have to think about how am I living? What am I doing? What do I have in the background? Last week, I'm saying, hey, there's a done for you program and developing it. So it's in your voice, right? That's really, really important that what you create is in your voice, not in someone else's voice. It's all very well buying a program, but if it's somebody else's voice, you won't align with it and you won't be able to sell it. It has to be in your voice. And that's what done for you, my done for you program is all about. It's creating it in your voice. And the bonus is learning to speak to people and coach them. So there's my coaching course comes as a bonus with that at the moment. But when we think about how we handle all of these people that we see, what we take home with us, and the difficulty level in what we do, it's okay to put your prices up. You know, it's a new year coming up. It's okay to say, this is my worth. And it's okay to look around you and say, well, all these other people are charging this. Why can't I charge that? And there's no point going, oh, but I'm newly qualified and they've been at it for 20 years. Well, yeah, but they've got 20 years worth of clients. They're happy with what they're charging. If it's, hey, they're only newly qualified and what they're charging and I've been in it for 20 years, maybe it's time you put your rates up. So when we think about our future, our 2025, which is, you know, November, 2025 is around the corner. December is going to be full of people of running around of sorting yourself out, of getting Christmas ready if that's what you do or whatever, religious, whatever you do. I don't have one. We go down to the beach and have a feed on our day off and it's great. Didn't last year. The weather was terrible. So fingers crossed for weather this year. How are you prepping for the new year? How are you getting ready for that new year? Because we're at the end of November. Yes, I've got sales on and that's part of my November. That's part of my year and prepping for the new year, making sure that yes, I'll be working hard at the beginning of December, but also it means I've got money to cover me for the Christmas and New Year because I've put out my done for you course, because I've put out my pediatric course on the Black Friday offer. And if I hadn't done that, yes, I still have a stable income because I've developed a stable system. So my Monday group, but I don't charge them in January. So I'm not having any money come in in January except my Academy. So I do have a very low pay, is what, 42, 50 at the moment to get into the academy. And that means that, yes, I get a regular little income coming in, sneaks through all the time. And those people get one to ones quarterly. So they're kind of saving up for their one to ones and they've still got lots of 
activities in the background. They get emails and they, so there's lots going on, but we have to think of this ongoing payment and we have to think of the new year. What are you putting out in the new year? Because whatever you're putting out in the new year has to be organized now. So what are you organizing now for the new year so that you've got some money coming in, so you've got some income, so that you can put money aside for a holiday or for your retirement or whatever, add money to the mortgage, whatever it might be. So I want you to really think about that. I want you to sit down and think, the new year's coming. How am I planning and what am I doing for the new year? So just a quick one for this one. And I look forward to catching up with you very, very soon, hopefully in one of my groups. Email me, catch up with me. I'd love to hear from you. See ya. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.